we retro video gamers at art. It seems like every wave of every generation of video game console that comes out, it's always defined by me by whatever boxing game come out for it. Uh, I want to focus on one video game at the end of every podcast that got that helped satisfy that boxing craving we had. And I, I want to start with the first one that I was ever introduced to. I was over at Aiden's house once. He's my cousin, for people who don't know, it, and he had Barry McGugan's boxing on the on the Z- ZX Spectrum. And I didn't take much note of it other than watching him play. And then he turned up at my house with a present. I had a Commodore 64 and he turned up with Barry McGugan's boxing, but it was in colour. That was 1985, so I would have been eight. And I think I, sp- I played that game for about three years. Um, how did you, when you first had it, did you read about it or did you catch it in the, like, the local shop? You just saw it. How did you come to have... Uh, originally with these fighting games, it starts off with the martial arts ones and... Right back to the Yaa Kang Fu in the arcade and the uh, Karate Champ or whatever it was. International and Karate, yeah. Anything combat wise you'd want to buy. Obviously, mm. Wave Exploding Fist was a big one back in the day. But then the boxing ones, obviously, being a fan of boxing, you think, I want to get a boxing game. And that was the first one I seen on a home console. In those days, I, I don't. I mean, I, my parents bought me games or you bought me games, but, but where would you go to buy these games? Uh, WH Smith's. Ah, oh, that's yeah. They had the massive. And you had yeah. uh, the video shops, which sold a small selection as well. Just so you that. hadn't read any mag. You weren't subscribing to any sort of magazines at the yeah, time. Yeah, uh, there's a Spectrum magazine. I mm. think most of it was coding. The typical thing would be you'd spend like say half a day writing in three pages of code to get a spider run across the screen. I mean, <laughs> and then if it didn't work, then you wait till the next month. They say, "Oh, we made a typo," and they put <laughs> the <put a> mistake. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was released in 1985 by GameStar, later, later adopted by the Activision Mastertronic range, you know, the budget range that they had. Um, it scored well when it first released. I mean, people like you, your Sinclair, they give it 8 out of 10, 5 stars from Sinclair users, while the CVG, Computer Video Games Magazine, give it 75%. So we've told everyone what it is, but why was this... I believe this game was, was revolutionary, and you, if you play the, the EA Fight Night series, you can see a lot of it was taken from this game, a lot of the training mechanisms. Um, do you want to explain how the game played? You know, what was so special about Barry McGuigan's boxing? First of all, it's situated in the featherweight division. Barry McGuigan was the then champ, or maybe lost his title by that point. I'm not Did sure. he come out just after he lost to Steve Cruz? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must have been, because I was always going to be either Steve Cruz or uh, Zuma Nelson. So you create your own <laughs> character, your own name, uh, you pick your personality, whether you're like, there's a number of characteristics you've got, you've got to have convinced, you can call yourself convinced. Oh, uh, yeah. You have your, like, your stats for, I think it was like your body type. The last lot, lot of stats you'd have would be in order, of, it'd say like mighty, lightning, awesome, convinced. So obviously lightning was referring to speed type. So mm. you create your character and then you just, work your way from the, the bottom to the top as far as contenders where you fight all the contenders or you can miss one or two out but predominantly you just have to, have to fight fight your way from every fight and train with every fight and get the top i used to pad my record with about 30 uh, you, you got like 30 fighters or whatever it was now, yeah, and fight, fight them about six times each is it? yeah and i should really pad my records out i did so it was like about 40 odd and know by the time i challenged for the title yeah so i yeah, once got tried to get 100 and 0 but he went to 99 wins and he went back to zero <laughs> so I wasted all that time. <laughs> and That's yeah, in the you, days where you couldn't save the game either, could you? You couldn't save that game. Just no, you couldn't. No, you, you sat there and done it. And it was sometimes I don't know if it, I can't remember if it was real time, but there was fifteen round fights you had to do as well. And I the yeah. the way I would beat them was by was it fifteen or twelve? I'm not sure. It was in the days of the fifteen round fights. The IBF was still doing fifteen round fights in eighty five, yeah. were they? Let the uh, yeah, let the and WB as well. So let the let the sort of podcast go and search. I think. Mm. We're sure, we're sure. So do you re- do you remember any of the opponents? Yes, I got. Um, I remember Flash Fenwick. I, I'm pretty sure that. Um, yeah, he's probably the first one was quite difficult. Yeah. And then you had Boom Boom Barnett. It was like nails. You had to avoid his punches, and then but it's all in 2D. It sounds exciting now, but if you look at it, you think. <laughs> I saw more. De- yeah, I saw more detail than was than was yeah. actually there. More uh, lucky, the common, lucky Lou Linden. Com- yeah, because you had one the Commodore 64 version. You could flurry better, and you wouldn't take any energy off yourself. Mm. Like 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 a Leonard, Leonard Hagler flurry in round nine. You just flurried away and 
keep winning that way, but it's just obviously two D. So mostly type moves in you know imagination rather than the, the game itself. Yeah. Sonny Robinson, he was the guy you had to beat. Because I remember thinking it was clearly um, Sugar Ray Robinson, wasn't it? And you had to beat him neg- before you fought for the title. The only negative about this game growing up was once you got to the top and you beat Bobby McGuigan, you could only defend against McGuigan. You couldn't. That's you right, couldn't, yeah. Yeah, you couldn't defend the title on a run and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that, that annoyed me. But it, I, what. Because what, when I was researching this to, to refresh my memory, I'm, I play. Every week I still play Fight Night Champion on the Xbox One, but it was an Xbox 360 game. Yeah. And I love the fact that, you know, you, you go up the ranks, you pick your opponents and you go to different styles. And I couldn't believe how much has been lifted from Barry McGuigan boxing. I mean, they nailed the format of a boxing game. You know, you, you all you want to do is train, pick your opponents and change your style. And and another aspect they, they got in it, in their by McGuigan's, you, if you had a really rubbishy fight, say you like backpedal or just held, or whatever, mm. I don't know if you can hold, avoid the punches, you say the crowd is dissatisfied and then yeah. the crowd is leaving. So do you they do that sort of thing now? Um, they get the commentator tells you that you're boring and your stuff because I I stink out. I'm like Johnny Nelson on on my fight night champions. I just jab and move, jab and move, and the crowd boos like mad. Yeah. So it's. It was an amazing game. It's um, yeah, I remember so much. Uh, two games come out that you know, boxing games come out that year. I mean, Frank, we'll discuss Frank Bruno bo- boxing on a different podcast. But there was one Frank Bruno boxing went down the arcade route, so I didn't give him much time. But this mm. Byron Gogan boxing, I I know I played this up until about ni- about four or five years. You know, yeah, until enough there to sort of keep you going till the, the new ones coming out, really. Yeah, it it, it was truly. Looking back at it now, it, it looks awful, but it was really ahead of his time with the simulation depth, you know. And the guys are going to be seeing footage to the game as you play, and, and you know. And if you were younger than us, you're probably going to see what the hell are you, what the hell are you talking about? This game looks awful. But trust me, <laughs> we were so starved for boxing sort of simulations that this was, I don't know, it, it was it was the game that I compared every future boxing game to. Yeah, it was an era where every sort of programmer would try and come up with something different as well. Like you, mm. the, the diversity of games back in those days, people just try it one day and if it failed, it failed. There's another name. I don't, name, don't, I don't understand why people like, because this was made by one man, um, Peter Ward. I don't know what else he went on to do, but this was developed by one man. I don't understand why somebody can't make like a homage to it, but with a better fighting engine. It would sell so well, you know, in the yeah. budget sort of like, because featherweight is an interesting division as well. When you consider that over the years, I mean, great sort of fighters you've had from those divisions, the Pereiras, so, Lomachenko's, all the other ones. And imagine having that roster to defend against. Yeah, or or you know, eight bit graphics or sixteen bit graphics, say you know, super it up with a good fighting mm. engine, and then every division, and it's just the ultimate purest form of boxing simulation. It is. You would only take a three or four man team, and the Kickstarter you get, you know, the the hype you could build around it before it's released. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it, Barry McGuigan's boxing, or what do you call it just featherweight boxing? Well, just world championship boxing, or just just something silly like boxing simulator. You pick yeah. your weight, you know, and it's such an easy. We don't need 3D graphics for boxing. You don't need realistic sort of fighter models. You just need a solid sort of like game loop. You know, you, you need mm-hmm. to be able to do body punches, body hooks. Uh, you know, I could I could divide. Hold. Some, yeah, hold is a. I don't think I ever held in Barry McGuigan's. Could you hold? Or would you just do that flooding thing when you pull? Yeah, flooding and go backwards, or you can block a lot, couldn't you? Oh, what a brilliant game. I, I just downloaded, before we started this pod, I just, because I want to get footage, our own footage of Barry Hogan's boxing uh, for the YouTube video. You know, my memory is so cloudy, I, I don't even know if you, you could clinch, or whether there's an automatic response. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to, I'll know by the end of, by the time this video goes up, because I'll be using our screenshots. I will use, I'll be recording my footage of me playing it. Yeah, so it's a good archive uh, game to, to have a go of. If only yeah. five, five minutes or beat the first three, two or three fighters. Fun memories. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant memories. Right, um, next week we'll look at um, Frank Bruno Boxing and maybe another one because I don't think it's a, it's a full sort of like YouTube episode on Frank Bruno's Boxing because it's basically a rip-off of <laughs> Punch-Out. Um, so um, if, you listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, we have got an actual audio podcast, which you can see in the link below. 
And also in the show notes on the podcast, you'll see a link for our YouTube channel. So you should be, everybody will be able to see this game running. Okay. So have a good week and try and stay sane in this pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Ciao for now, guys. <laughs>